All right, so we're going to look at our first technique of integration, right? So um, depending on your course, this might be the final topic of your Calculus 1 course. It might be the very first topic of your Calculus 2 course. Um, we know from the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, second part of the Fundamental Theorem, that integration, in, in some sense, at least efficient integration, is about finding antiderivatives, right? We would much rather find an antiderivative and apply the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus than to go messing around with Riemann sums or something like that, right? We just want to find the antiderivative, plug in the endpoints, and call it done. Um, the trouble is that antiderivatives are much harder to find than derivatives, right? Derivatives, we just turn the crank. The derivative comes out. We have the rules. We follow the rules. We get the answer. Going backwards is much harder, okay? And so there's a number of techniques that, that are around to try and reverse the derivative process. And, and part of the problem is that a function that you might write down is not necessarily something that would have just popped out as the derivative of something else, right? Um, and so an example of this is when you get to say the chain rule, right? So we know how to do the chain rule now, right? So chain rule says, oh, if you want to take the derivative of, let's say, Let's say we want to do the derivative of e to the x squared. Okay. Well, we know you take the derivative of the outside, you leave the inside alone, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, 2x, right? Okay, so there we go, right? Uh, in, in general, if we were doing the derivative of f of g of x, we would have f prime at g of x times g prime of x. Okay? And now, of course, you can reverse that process, right? If you wanted to say, so if somebody said, okay, well, here's the chain rule. Now, what I want to know is what's the antiderivative of f prime of g of x times g prime of x? You say, okay, well, I want the antiderivative of a derivative. I know what it is. I just read this from right to left instead of left to right, and I say, well, it's f of g of x, right? Possibly plus some constant. Okay. Well, the trouble is that usually this is not going to be laid out for you like this, right? Um, probably you're not going to have 2x times e to the x squared sitting there saying, hey, Find the antiderivative, and you're like, yeah, it's e to the x squared, man, I know that. Um, maybe the, the 2 is missing, and you just have the x, right? If the x is missing, oh, then you're really in trouble, okay? If the x isn't there, we talked about this, if you're just trying to find an antiderivative for e to the x squared, there isn't one. You can't find it. Um, so this is, the, this is the issue, right? Taking the derivative of e to the x squared is simple. The antiderivative sort of in a way impossible, unless you happen to have that 2x out front coming from the chain rule, right? So this is where, where anti-differentiation gets harder, is partly because when we take the derivative of compositions, chain rule spits out this extra stuff, and if the extra stuff is missing, we can't reverse the process. So how do you set up substitution if you're trying to reverse this? Well, you might kind of go back and think about, well, you know, the way I might have set this up, right? When I was first learning the chain rule, I might have said something like this. I might have said, okay, well, we're going to let y equal f of u, where u is equal to g of x, right? And then we said, okay, and we know from Leibniz rule, or, you know, the Leibniz notation that dy dx, we said, oh, that's dy du times du dx, right? And we kind of reverse the process, right? And you kind of take the step back. And, and so what you can do is you can kind of, you can do that same thing in reverse where you introduce this intermediate variable, right? Um, another way to think about this is if you, if you drop the dx, if you think in terms of differentials, right? We can think about dy is dy du times du, right? Okay, where, what's du? du is d 
du dx times dx, right? It's, it's g prime of x times dx. So you come here and you say, okay, well, what I've got in this situation, I look at this and I say, okay, g prime of x dx, there's my, there's my du, right? And then I say, oh, and then, of course, this is u. So rather than doing things in terms of x, what you do is you say, well, this is the integral of f prime of u times du. And then you know exactly what to do, right? Because an indefinite integral is an antiderivative. The antiderivative of a derivative is the original function. It's f of u plus c, right? But, well, if we started with x, we should probably end with x. So then we plug in O and u, by the way, u is equal to g of x. And we end up with that same answer as before. Right? That's the idea. So how this tends to work in practice is somebody might say, I want the antiderivative of x e to the x squared. Right? And maybe that 2 is missing. And there's a couple of ways you might do this, right? So the first thing you got to remember is substitution is reversing chain rule, right? We're reversing the chain rule process. Chain rule comes up when there's composition. So the way you know that substitution is likely involved is if you see function composition. And we do. We see the x squared plugged into the exponential function. So we know there's composition going on. Chances are, if there is function composition, u is whatever is inside, right? That's always the first thing you try. Sometimes there are substitution problems where you have to be a little bit clever, but typically u is the inside function, just like it was when we were doing chain rule. u is the inside function, right? So you say okay, u is x squared. The next thing you do is say, what's du? If, if u is x squared, du is what, right? We learned how to do differentials. du is 2x times dx, okay? And then you say, okay, do I have a 2x times dx? And you say, okay, uh, I have an x, x. I have a dx, it's there. Uh, oh, I don't have a 2. How do I get a 2? Well, you can do one of two things. You could go down here and you could say, oh, let's divide by 2. Half du is x times dx, right? This is what people usually do. They say, okay, so that means that if I have x e to the x squared dx. I kind of group this part together. This is half du. This is u. And we say, so this is the integral of, of 1 half e to the u times du. Right? There's my half du. So it's 1 half e to the u plus c. And then we say, oh, but we want to end in terms of x. So 1 half e to the x squared plus c. And you have your answer, right? That's how most of you are probably going to do it. The other thing you could have done is you could have said, you know, I want, I want this du is 2x dx. I want that exactly in there. I want to kind of just go straight back to this. Well, if you need a 2, put a 2 in. But you can't just put a 2 in. That's going to double the value, right? So if you want to put a 2 in and you don't want to affect the answer, put something out front that cancels it. Put a 1 half out front, right? We know we can move constants in and out of the integral. Um, putting the 1 half out front and the 2 on the inside doesn't change the value of the integral. And then you see this and you recognize that as, oh, that's exactly the chain rule derivative of e to the x squared. And you get your answer, right? Whichever way works for you is the one that you go with.